Okay, welcome to part two of jerkbait fluking. So the last video, the fluke were pretty aggressive. And in this one, they were much less so. So I had to make certain adjustments. And one of them is using different kinds of jerkbaits. And mainly the difference will come in depth. So depth control and jerkbait fishing is pretty important. You have to reach the fish. You have to close that distance that a fish is willing to travel to come and eat your jerkbait. And in the case of fluke, it's pretty simple. They're always going to be on the bottom. They're never going to suspend. So you need to be in their strike zone the entire time. The jerkbait doing most of the damage on this day was the Jackal Rerange 110 MR. And the MR dives about 7 to 8 feet on 10 pound fluoro. And I'm pretty much casting into 12 to 15 feet. So they're still coming up quite a ways, but not quite as far as they were in the last video. So here's just a little shot of the 110 Rerange action. You see a cut left, right, left, and that's basically what the jerkbait is doing on a normal cast. Although, the deeper it dives, the better it looks. These hard baits usually look their best. They have the best action at their maximum depth. So, But you do get an idea when you look at it at the shoreline. Now, if you notice, I'm not hitting the jerkbait that hard this day compared to last week's video. The fish are a lot less aggressive and I am just tapping it with my raw tip. I'm not really jerking or ripping the bait as much as I did. Okay, so, so far, these fish have been T-boning this 110 MR re-range. And that's a sign that your color is on point, the size, the action, they like everything about it. But that's going to change later on in the day. The general rule of thumb is if you're not getting bit at all, then you need to change the size, different brands, that kind of thing. If you're getting bit, but they're barely skin hooked, usually on the tail hook, then it's usually a color problem. Holy shit. So once again, this fish just T-boned the bait. It was a pure headshot, nothing tentative about it. The only thing is, compared to the week before, they were not willing to come as far off the bottom. So once you get these baits into their strike zone, then they were killing it. It's a good example of how small tweaks in your tackle, in this case, it's a difference of two to three feet at most between the 110 re-range MR and the regular re-range and that made all the difference this day. That. 
So here's another healthy keeper. They're all around that four, four and a half pound mark. So none of these are slot fish. Okay, every fish you're gonna see in this video is over 18 inches. And on this day, I'm not keeping any of them. I mentioned before that I want these baits to suspend perfectly. That's not entirely true. I realized pretty early on that, at least from shore, when you're working a bait from deep water into shallow water, you actually want them to have a pretty slow float. Otherwise, you'll never get them over the lip in any kind of efficient manner. But more on that later. If you pay attention here, actually starting from the previous fish, they're starting to bite a little bit funny. The last two fish kind of ate the tail hook. They didn't really T-bone the bait like they were earlier during the day. So there are certain adjustments you can make. For me, I'm still sticking with it because they're still eating it and I'm still hooking up. So until that changes, I'm going to stick with this bait and just give small variations to both my cadence and how hard I'm working the bait. So earlier I mentioned that these baits are mostly tuned to have a super slow float. Well, check this out. Oh my god. See that? So I'll zoom in and slow it down. Yeah, so that fluke intercepted that slow floating jerk bait almost at the surface, which is pretty cool. So here the tide is running out and I'm fishing a slightly shallower flat. So I change baits. This is the Lucky Craft Lightning Pointer 110. Um, it's a good bait. It's a li little bit more high floating or rather I tune it that way so I could fish a shallower. A lot of these high float shallow diving jerk baits in freshwater, they're meant to be fished over submergent weed lines so over the tops of grass and only two or three feet of water so if you notice i'm barely tapping this bait if you overwork it it'll blow out um, pretty temperamental bait compared to some of the others in my jerk bait box Once again, I replaced all the treble hooks with owner and line singles, and I'll leave a link to all the baits, gear, tackle down in the description below. Just 
Just a quick note about the private lessons we've been hosting. There's no secrets being divulged in these in-person tutorial sessions. It's basically the same information we've been saying over and over in all our videos. And a lot of you can just watch the videos and put everything together. But some of you can't. And some of you just don't have the time. And if you're one of those people, I think it really does make sense. It really is a valuable shortcut. And we'll make videos explaining in more detail what they are. But in the meantime, if you're interested, our contact information is in the description below. Oh, fuck. So these last few fish were right beyond the lip. And a lot of times when you're fishing from shore, that lip, that edge, is the main structure. right? It's not hard structure. It's not sandbars and all kinds of crazy stuff. It is that lip. This fish stayed inverted for over a minute. I've never seen that before. So I hope you guys saw that, but one thing I noticed is how hard these jerkbait fish fight on average, much harder than when you catch them on a jig. And I think what that is, is they're at peak adrenaline. They broke cover, they came up off the bottom to eat your jerkbait, and that's when they're getting hooked. Not after they take your jig and settle back down and then you reel down all the slack and set the hook like you should. But on a jerk bait, they get stung immediately. And that's why they freak out. That's when they're most vulnerable, right at the peak of their exposure to other predators. They're getting stung. And that's why I think you're getting these, these drag ripping runs out of these fluke. And here we're about to meet our friend again. So what you're about to see here is probably the most classic jerkbait bite yet. And as you recall, these baits are slowly floating, so visualize that. I'm going to let it pause, the bait's going to float up, and a fluke is just going to yank the rod out of my hand. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much it for the second jerkbait video. As promised, it was sort of a refinement on the technique, mainly about depth control, which is very important. I'm definitely having a lot of fun making these videos. I appreciate you guys joining me on this jerkbait experiment, and hopefully there's more to come. We'll see where the season takes us. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Tight lines.